Kia ora everybody, how are you doing? I've been um, promising for quite a while that I was going to read just a few paragraphs from my favourite book, The Art of Happiness. Um, I actually tried to get copyright permission because I wanted to do it right and I was unsuccessful get in touch with the uh, original copyright holder so I decided just to go ahead and do it and I'm only going to read a few paragraphs here and there anyway so it's not like I'm reading the whole book to you um, but I, it is a really interesting book if you haven't read it and it's really just about a conversation between a psychologist and the Dalai Lama asking him questions about finding solutions to our Western problems but using his kind of his own Buddhist background and what have you so anyway I'm just gonna pick a couple of different paragraphs and sections that I thought you might like and that might be relevant Okay, so here goes. Transforming suffering, self-created suffering. We also, we also often add to our pain and suffering by being overly sensitive, overreacting to minor things, and sometimes taking things too personally. This is definitely. With these words, the Dalai Lama recognizes the origin of many of the day-to-day -day aggravations that can add up to be a major source of suffering. Therapists sometimes call this process personalizing our pain. The tendency to narrow our psychological field of vision by interpreting or misinterpreting everything that occurs in terms of its impact on us. One night, I had dinner with a colleague at a restaurant. The service at the restaurant turned out to be very slow. And from the time we sat down, my colleague began to complain. Look at that, the waiter is so damn slow. Where is he? I think he's purposely ignoring us. Although neither of us had pressing engagements, my colleagues' complaints about the slow service continued to escalate throughout the meal and expanded into a litany of complaints about the food, tableware, and anything else that was not to his liking. At the end of the meal, the waiter presented us with two free desserts explaining I apologize for the slow service this evening, he said sincerely, but we're a little understaffed. One of the cooks had a death in the family and is off tonight, and one of the servers called in sick at the last minute. I hope it didn't inconvenience you. Well, I'm still never coming here again, my colleague muttered bitterly under his breath as the waiter walked off. This is only a minor illustration of how we contribute to our own suffering by personalizing every annoying situation as if it were being intentionally perpetrated on us. In this case, the net result was only a ruined meal, an hour of aggravation. But when this kind of thinking becomes a pervasive pattern of relating to the world and extends to every comment made by our family or friends or even events in society at large it can become a significant source of our misery it's not exactly the most uplifting part of the book but it kind of is if you take it the right way I think 
I think many of us are guilty, especially in the Western world. Every little slight, every little thing that happens, well, it's not a slight. It feels like someone slighted us. I mean, really, it's no big deal. And I'm really, really trying to learn that myself. Let's see what else we can find. The importance of flexible thinking. There is a reciprocal relationship between a supple mind and the ability to shift perspective. A supple, flexible mind helps us address our problems from a variety of perspectives and conversely, deliberately trying to objectively examine our problems from a variety of perspectives can be seen as a kind of flexibility training for the mind. In today's world, the attempt to develop a flexible mode of thinking isn't simply a self-indulgent exercise for idle intellectuals. It can be a matter of survival. Even on an evolutionary scale, the species that have the most flexible, most adaptable to environmental changes have survived and thrived. Life today is characterized by sudden, unexpected and sometimes violent change. A supple mind can help us reconcile the external changes going on all around us. It can also help us integrate all of our internal conflicts, inconsistencies and ambivalence without cultivating a pliant mind, our outlook becomes brittle and our relationship to the world becomes characterized by fear. But by adopting a flexible, malleable approach to life, we can maintain our composure even in the most restless and turbulent conditions. It is through our efforts to achieve a flexible mind that we can nurture the resiliency of the human spirit. I like that. Realistic expectations. In bringing about genuine inner transformation and change, the Dalai Lama emphasizes the importance of making a sustained effort it is a gradual process. This is in sharp contrast to the proliferation of quick fix self-help techniques and therapies that have become so popular in Western culture in recent decades. Techniques ranging from positive affirmations to discovering your inner child. The Dalai Lama's approach points toward a slow growth and maturity he believes in the tremendous, perhaps even unlimited power of the mind. But a mind that has been systematically trained, focused, concentrated, a mind tempered by years of experience and sound reasoning. It takes a long time to develop the behavior and habits of a mind that contribute to our problems. It equally takes a long time to establish the new habits that bring happiness. There is no getting around these essential ingredients, determination, effort, and time. These are the real secrets to happiness. It does sound like an awful lot of hard work, to be honest, but I'm one of these people who I think I've always tried to find a quick fix for things. And the older I get, the more I realize even though I have less time, I have less time, I need to use it, what time I do have to fix problems properly rather than just quick fixing because you always go back to the way that you are eventually. So it's like diets, you know, you go on a diet, you lose some weight, diet finishes, 
and you go back to normal, put the weight back on. Whereas everyone knows that if you change slowly, gradually, permanently, that has a greater chance of success than a simple quick fix. That's my thoughts anyway. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Anyway, take care and I'll see you in the next one.